This video is sponsored by Factor, healthy eating made easy. More on them later. So this is the fifth video in my most recent ground effect vehicle video series, and the second video of this weird wedge wing ram effect vehicle design I came up with. It's designed to have a strong natural tendency to want to stay really low, and to ride on the high pressure pocket of air we know of as ground effect, or ram effect. If you want to know more about the aerodynamic concept, go check out my previous video. But the basic idea is that it uses a wedge-shaped wing to create lift with the ram effect while having zero real angle of attack. This makes it so that right as it gets too high and leaves ground effect, all the lift is lost and it will come back down. As you can see, it works quite well. In this video, I'm going to do some more testing and see how it handles extra weight, and then add a DJI FPV system and try some long-range FPV missions, which ends up being pretty cool, so stick around for that. It's currently 5.30 a.m. I think this might be my only weather window for today, but I'm going to test out the dual battery heavier configuration. Got a little extra foam there on the bottom to help keep the nose up. Got the Insta360 Go camera in the back to balance the CG out with the extra battery in there. So let's see how it does. Okay, throttling up. Motors forward. Look out, muskrat. River otter, whatever you are. Ah, oh, damn it. it. Got all wet. Wow, that works really well though. Here we have the Insta360 GO 2 camera on board. You can see how it starts off in contact with the water and makes a big wake. Then the beaver slaps its tail, the aircraft builds up more speed and then breaks contact with the water and flies at about an inch high until I drop the throttle and it comes back down. The wake you see in the aircraft's path is entirely from the downwash hitting the water until I drop the throttle and then you can see where it starts to hit the water again. Nice. It seems to work really well with the added weight. One interesting thing I noticed in this onboard footage is that there are these two little lines of wake on either side. They are kind of hard to see, but I think they are either caused by wingtip vortexes or by the front two little wedge-shaped floats, making some narrow little jets of downwash in the front. Kind of interesting. I swear this beaver was trolling me. He was definitely going back and forth right in the flight path on purpose. Probably trying to start some beef. Silly beaver. So this thing definitely seems to be optimized for staying in ground effect, but that probably doesn't come free. My guess is that there's a big trade-off with the wedge-shaped wing design, and it likely comes at the expense of efficiency. For full-scale ground effect vehicles, the whole point is to be more efficient and save fuel, so maybe this isn't the most practical design to be scaled up, but it sure is fun as an RC model. It's so easy to pilot too, all you do is shove the throttle up and, and steer. To me the most interesting thing about this model is how when it's flying with little or no angle of attack, it almost seems to get held next to the ground by some sort of a suction force. You can kind of see it porpoising up and down a little bit in that suction zone. It really seems to be just locked at that altitude. I'm not entirely sure what's causing this, but my best guess is that we have a few opposing forces going on. First of all, we have the ram effect building up pressure under the wing and lifting the aircraft up. But at the same time, we have the venturi effect causing the air under the step to speed up. As this happens, its pressure drops due to the Bernoulli effect, which essentially sucks the back end down towards the ground. Since the back is getting sucked down and the front is still getting lifted up, the aircraft pitches up and rises. As it rises, the ram effect is reduced and it comes back down, and the cycle repeats. Another possible source of this downforce in the back is from this rear surface here that could act like a big diffuser on a race car. It would create a low pressure pocket that sucks the back down and cause the same porpoising feedback loop. So typically it doesn't need any elevator input from the pilot to stay in ground effect, but here I'm experimenting with some pitch up command to see how strong of a tendency it has to want to stay low. One thing worth noting is that the elevator stick does not directly control the elevator on this model. Since it's running ArduPilot in fly-by-wire A mode most of the time, the elevator stick instead controls the pitch angle set point, and the flight controller is running a PID loop to try and achieve that desired set point. I'm giving it a lot of up elevator now. So as I give it more and more pitch up command, it slowly gets higher and higher. Oh, it's flying high. With full up elevator command, it will eventually break ground effect and fly like a normal plane, but it really does not fly well at all. It also starts to have some bad oscillations once it gets about 6 inches high. Here's a nice shot of the takeoff process. 
First you pivot the motors up to pop the nose up out of the water, and then slowly lower them down until the thrust line is flat, and that's how it cruises. Here's a shot where I just flipped the Insta360 GO camera around. Ground effect vehicles are notorious for having a ridiculously huge turning radius, and this one can definitely turn, but yeah, not very sharply. So I took the Insta360 off the back here. It was not hard. The thing was about to fall off anyways. So now I'm going to see how it behaves just being super nose heavy. I was surprised that this thing worked at all while it was super nose heavy, because usually ground effect vehicles are super sensitive to CG changes. I also tested it in manual mode with no fly-by-wire active pitch stabilization, and it still worked, but the amount of throttle it needed to stay at the right altitude was super sensitive. So it seems like with no flight controller attitude stabilization, you can still fly in ground effect, but the amount of throttle required to keep it at the right altitude is so much, it's such a smaller range. It's much more difficult to dial that in. When I have my head buried in ground effect land, I really have a hard time focusing on eating well. That's why I signed up for Factor. Factor makes eating easy by delivering fresh, never frozen meals right to your doorstep. Factor takes the guesswork out of grocery shopping and meal prep, saving you time and energy for other things like ground effect vehicles. So all you have to do is puncture the packaging a few times and then microwave it on high for two minutes. Their no-hassle, pre-prepared foods make sure you always have something nutritious on hand when you don't have time to make a meal. Look at this one. Damn! Oh, I'm getting hungry. Bing! Mmm. Okay, let's check this out. Mmm. Wow, it tastes like something my grandmother would cook, and she's a very good cook. What are you eating there? Jamaican jerky ground turkey and sweet potatoes. And uh, it tastes delicious, actually. Does it have that authentic Jamaican flavor? I wouldn't know. <laughs> Me neither. It's good, though, it so is. they must be doing something right. Try it. All right. Mm. Mm-hmm. Got some good spices. This is pretty good. Give him oh. some of the turkey. Uh, Here, I'll catch it. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that's very good. That's really <laughs> good. Yeah, I would eat this for every meal. This is delicious. You no, know, we only spent two minutes making our food so we can go back to work. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Ooh, we we got asparagus and salmon. That's Bandy's favorite. It looks really good. Can I have some? Oh, you can have some. That's really good. This is just a full blown salmon filet. Never frozen. So good! Wow. Mm. Factor helps you avoid takeout and ordering in with delicious and nutritious, no-nonsense food that's super easy to prepare. Their chef-made meals make it easy to eat well, so you never have to settle for something that isn't good for you. Meal plans range from 4 to 18 meals per week, and you can add more or reduce the number depending on your specific needs. Plus, you can easily skip a week if you need to. Head to go.factor75.com slash rctestflight120 and use promo code RCTESTFLIGHT120 to get $120 off. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring this video. Someone left their orange cup at the park. It was sealed, don't worry. So today, I have uh, 15 extra ounces of weight on here. One extra battery, and then this. This is nine ounces, and the other one is five ounces, so. Almost an extra pound of weight. We'll see uh, what happens. Just for reference, the total weight with all this extra stuff is now 2 pounds 11 ounces. I also added some extra foam behind the front skid to help keep the nose floating higher up off the water. Let's see if the water line is too high for the motors to spin. Oh no, it still works. Amazing. Oh, it eats too much water. Full throttle. Come on baby, turn. Whoa, it's not working. It's too heavy. Oh, there we go. Wow, just in the last minute, I built up enough airspeed to break contact with the water. Gotta get more throttle to get up. In this clip, if you look really closely, you can see it porpoising just like the F1 cars. This is likely because with the increased speed and weight, the ground effect negative feedback loop is now so strong that the system has become overtuned and it oscillates. <laughs> that was a 
swimming stick. The beaver must be working on his beaver dam. His or her beaver dam, excuse me. Or their, their beaver dam. Wow. So I just need a little extra up elevator to kind of break, uh, break the contact with the water. Did you notice how my horizontal stabilizer is like bending in half? Oh wow, I flew. Too much up elevator. She's heavy. Oh my god, they're so cute! Aww. They're so cute. Oh wow, they can uh, hydroplane, hydrofoil. <laughs> they can run on water like Jesus. There's the beaver carrying some more building supplies. With the extra weight and in manual mode with no active stabilization, it still worked, but once again, it required a much more delicate balance of airspeed and elevator trim to stay low. Too much of either and it would flip up or just stay on the ground. Look how low that leading edge is sitting in the water. Now just to do a side-by-side -side comparison, I took all the extra weight out. So this is the lightest configuration. Oh wow, it does feel so much lighter. To conclude the heavyweight testing, I'd say in general it does work better with less weight. Oh yeah, it works way better. No surprises there, that's the case with almost all aircraft. But still, at some point, I'd like to approach the ground effect thing from the opposite direction, which is to build a vehicle that is too heavy to fly, and then keep adding more and more power until it can barely get up off the ground. But for now, this foam plane is definitely not that, and it's definitely preferable to operate with less payload. Oh shit. Oh shit. The amazing thing about this airplane is you can just go to full throttle and not touch the elevator, and it just stays low to the ground. Like, that's full throttle. No elevator input. It just stays down. It just wants to ride low. I think one of the reasons for that is that what the flight controller thinks is the neutral angle is a little bit negative on the angle of attack. So like the flight controller is always trying to nose down a little bit more than it can aerodynamically. Whoa, gust of wind hit it. Damn. So today I've got a CADEX Vista installed up here. I replaced the Futaba receiver in there with the S-Bus signal coming out of this so it's being used for control and for FPV video. I waterproofed the air unit with some non-corrosive silicone adhesive. Hopefully it works because it's definitely going to get pretty wet. Oh, more babies. Oh, he fell. Oh, he can't go. There he goes. Okay, I'm now putting the FPV goggles on. I gotta try and keep the water off the camera. Might be hard. Okay, we gotta get up off the water. So motors are in the highest position. Gonna bring them down to the mid position, build up some speed and drop them all the way down. Oh, that's not how you keep water off the camera. Okay, I think we're, yep, we're flying now. Hopefully the forward airspeed will help dry off the lens. So what I'm unsure of is how much range I'll have when the aircraft is so low to the water like this. Um, wow, it's zooming though, that's for sure. Ooh wee! We're already approaching the other side of the lake. Oh yeah, the lens is starting to dry off. Sweet. With the other controller, I had the motor tilt set to a slower speed, but with this DJI FPV controller, I'm not able to control the speed for it. So that's kind of a bummer. Wow, this is so cool. <laughs> I'm pretty far away. This thing goes so fast. Okay, I'm gonna make a turn here and try and come back. Oh, I'm getting a warning saying my signal is low. Oh no, am I not gonna be able to see anything into the sun? Okay, I can see, sort of. My uh, controller signal is getting a little low. Wow, we I feel like I'm flying the Russian Ekrano plan, the Caspian Sea Monster but I can't see a whole lot. <laughs> oh, this is sweet. Okay, I'm gonna come do a drive by of the park. See if I can turn sharp here in front of the park without hitting anybody. Oh, 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 there must have been a wake there. Not good, not good. Whoa, it's a little bumpy. I think I'm hitting water. I don't know if these batteries can handle this constant full throttle that I'm at. There's a bird. We got a bogey. Woo! <laughs> Let's 
over here to the University of Washington dock. There's some, there's a boat ahead of me. I can't really tell what they're doing. Oh, that's a crew boat. Okay, I'm gonna make a big turn around them and then come home because I'm afraid that my battery is getting low. Also, my uh, controller signal is dropping again. I was down to two bars there for a sec, but icon turned red. Okay, full speed ahead, going home. Oh, I'm hitting some wind, it looks like. Oh yeah, I was flying high there for a second. Whoa, gotta come down. Okay, here we are, approaching home. Nice and easy, okay, throttling back. Oh, that was not nice and easy, that was wet. Well, that was successful. I need windshield wipers though, that's the problem. They're so cute. So over there it's pretty calm, and over here it's windier and choppier. So I think I might start over there and go from the smooth water to the choppy water and see how it does with the chop and the wind. Okay, so first things first, I gotta turn around and head down this canal. Let's see, it's still kind of bumpy here. I already got water on the lens, damn it. Oh, come on. Oh my God, the lens is so wet already. Okay, I'm up though. I'm flying. Woo Sick. Oh, this is so cool. Right under the bridge. Oh, it's so cool. Oh, there's a rower. There's two rowers. Okay, I'm stopping. Oh no, my hatch came open. Okay, I'm gonna put the motors up and now make my way back upwind. Okay, here we go. And motor's flat. Ooh, still spraying water. Zoom in. Okay, let's go see how that rough water does. Oh, there's the <laughs> rower. I'm going right by the rower. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, now I think we're clear up ahead. And starting to hit bumpier water, but we're flying. I think we're touching the water a little bit. There it goes by. Oh yeah, it's oh yeah, it's hitting the water. Okay, more up elevator. Ooh. Oh, that's bumpy. Oh yeah, that's real bumpy. Okay, throttling back. Abort, abort. <laughs> oh, it's choppy out there. Wow, and all the rowers are coming. I'm in uh, hovercraft mode with the motors up. So I think I'm just gonna kind of float on back in this mode. Maybe I'll put the motors one click down. Oh wow, okay. It's bumpy, that's real bumpy. Oh, don't want to flip over. Motors all the way up, full hovercraft mode. I gotta try and drive over there. So, definitely not a good rough watercraft. It cannot handle that small amount of chop. Glass water only. It just flies so low, because it just uses that ram effect that only really works like a few inches off the water and those waves are probably a few inches high. I was just over on the north side of the lake but there's a south wind, so uh, it was too choppy over there. So I came over to the south side, the water's a bit calmer, it looks more protected, but now it's kind of raining, so we'll see what we can do here. Okay, so today when I put the motors from up to flat, I'm gonna try and build up a lot more airspeed with them in the mid position, and hopefully when I drop them down to the flat position, they won't kick up as much water. Okay, so I gotta find a target destination here. I think I'm going to head towards that shipyard over there. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay. Motor's mid position. 
throttling up a lot and oh wet i'm so wet damn it but we're flying in ground effect we zoom in oh my antennas are down put them up okay sweet wow we're going so fast i can't see anything that's unfortunate <laughs> Oh, my controller signal is getting a little low. Okay, now we're good again. I'm going to try and give a little up elevator and see what happens. Yeah, it doesn't want to climb, that's for sure. Oh, there's a big yacht. Okay, I'm going to start a big radius turn. Going north. Hopefully, there's no rowers out there. That's the shipyard. Okay, my video is kind of getting a little blocky here. I'm gonna keep on turning. That's one thing about ground effects vehicles is they sure do not like to turn sharply. Okay, we're heading home. Wow, I have really bad video. Shoot, dang it. That's gnarly. Oh, there's a buoy. Ah, I have at least good enough video to avoid that buoy. <laughs> okay, wow, I was pretty high. I was giving it a lot of up elevator command. Okay, now I'm back down. No up elevator command. Gonna head. I don't really know where I am. I'm just gonna head in this direction. Okay, there's the museum right there. I know where that is. So maybe I'll go, oh sweet, okay, oh no, I'm hitting the ground. Oh, but I can see again, the lens must have got washed off. I'm gonna do a circle right here, since I can see now. Woohoo! Wow, there's a old ship. Go towards this ship. There's a nice smooth water over here on the far south side of the lake. And hard turn, avoid hitting those multi-million dollar yachts. I'm just at full throttle this whole time. I think I'm hitting the water. Oh yeah, I was turning too hard. I have differential thrust, so when I turn too hard, I lose uh, some thrust. Now I'm going straight. Okay, straighten out. Now I gotta go back here, which is, I think, right at the end of these boats towards the Space Needle. There's a bridge over here I could go under. That would be kind of fun. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. But I'm definitely gonna have to stop after I go under the bridge. Okay, that was pretty awesome, but now I'm, I'm way over there. So I gotta bring it home. Motor's up. Let's hovercraft on back. I'm just gonna hovercraft around here a little bit. I'm gonna go drive under this bridge now, just in, ho in hovercraft mode. Oh, it's too close to that goose. I'll come out of this little secluded area in full speed mode. Wow, that is wet. Okay, I just gotta aim towards that bridge that I can't see at all. There we go. <laughs> that was a little hairy. Okay, I'm bringing it home. And I overshot again, dang it. Okay, I'm just gonna taxi home. Well, that was mostly pretty successful. After some fun with FPV, I decided to go out for some more testing and tried to better understand the wedge wing behavior. What are you looking at? So it seems that this thing works way better with active pitch stabilization. You can see how the elevator is actively moving based on the angle of the aircraft. Um, but I'm very curious, if I put it in manual mode so that there's no active stabilization, but then just give it a lot of down trim, will that do the same thing? Will it still work? Huh, not the best. The 
Seems to work great. Uh oh. I'm dead in the water. What the heck? Would it even be an RC test flight ground effect vehicle without a inflatable kayak rescue? I think the DJI air unit there must have gotten some water in it. Of course, right as I get off the boat, the wind starts to blow on shore and it starts to rain. The ground effects gods are not on my side today. The control surfaces are completely unplugged with some down trim on the ailerons. It's windy. Damn. Motor's flat. As you can see, it does work with no active pitch or roll stabilization, but it's a very delicate balance. No roll stabilization, which is interesting. Look at that. Too much thrust or airspeed and it just flips up out of ground effect. The servos were completely unplugged here and I was trimming the pitch by just manually pushing the servos into the desired position. Wow. That's it right there. No pitch stabilization at all. Look at that. Wow, it does work. Definitely. Oh yeah. Wow. Let's try and give it some more throttle. Let's see what happens. Oh. Wow, too much throttle, it definitely wants to go higher. I did notice that without active pitch stabilization to help hold the nose down, it was flying at a higher angle of attack. This means it was getting some lift from more traditional means, rather than just from ram effect only with zero cord wise angle of attack. And that kind of defeats the whole purpose of this aircraft. I wish I could have had tried it again with even more pitch down trim to see if I could actually fly at zero angle of attack without pitch stabilization, but I never got around to that unfortunately. Next, in the name of science, I cut off the horizontal and vertical stabilizers to see if it would work as a simple wedge wing alone with nothing else. I was hoping the active yaw stabilization with the differential thrust would be enough to keep it going straight, but this was unfortunately not the case. I think it would have worked better if I had increased the yaw stabilization gain, but I did not get a chance to try that out. Wow, yeah, so it just does not pitch up when I give it a lot of throttle. Wow. Okay, I only had enough tape to put one of the vertical stabilizers back on. Oh, it definitely goes straighter, that's for sure. So this was pretty interesting to me. Even at full throttle, with no horizontal stabilizer, it was staying nose down and not flipping up. It kind of just seems like too nose heavy. That goes to show that the wing itself does not have any positive pitching moment, which is good. The weird thing is that the horizontal stabilizer was giving the aircraft a tendency to pitch up, even with some down trim on the elevator. I think this must have been because it was adding a lot of drag above the center of gravity, which would mean, in turn, it would cause it to have a positive pitching moment. I think if I were to rebuild this, I would have tried to put the horizontal stabilizer down lower to try and maintain a neutral pitching moment. So I think that if I had the ability to trim some sort of an elevator device, then that would allow me to trim it to the point where it would just barely fly above the surface. So today I put both vertical stabilizers back on and put elevons on the back of the wing or the fuselage or whatever it is. So that'll be interesting to see if it gives me the ability to trim the pitch a little bit better and prevent it just from riding uh, nose down with a low angle of attack on the wing. I'm thinking if I just trim it up just a little tiny bit, it'll kind of get up off the water and go into ram effect mode again. And then I've got some strings here. Maybe we can kind of visualize the airflow a little bit with the camera on there. Now yeah, that's, that's flying, I think. Wow. Yeah, that was working great. Damn. Wow, that thing just wants to stay glued to the water. That's wild. What was that? Whoa, it just did a weird pitch oscillation when I let off the throttle. Now we're flying. Whoa, that's crazy. The pitch is overtuned. Look at that. Oh my god, there's an army coming through. Ah! Look at them all. Wow, we oh they're all coming in. So many gooses. Sorry, gooses. The strings don't really show much. I probably should have made them much shorter, but they do seem to show that the air behind the camera and fuselage is turbulent, and the air on the back side of the wedge wing stays attached to the surface. Abort, abort, abort. 
I tried, I gave it full up elevator and tried to fly over them, but it would not go up. This thing does not fly at all. It's a true Ecrano plan. Look at that. Whee! Woo! Oh, right over the stick. This thing is good, man. Okay, in manual mode, I could definitely fly it, but in fly-by-wire A, full up elevator command results in zero flying, so. And that's full throttle, too. Oh, whoa, that one flew, holy cow. I feel like there was a flight controller attitude glitch there. Okay, I take everything I just said before that back. It can fly, sometimes, I guess, only when it wants to. Maybe it's the wind direction, because now it's not flying. That's full up elevator right there. It only flies like a foot. Look at that. Wow. Right over the stick. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure the porpoising you're seeing here is from the pitch gains still being too high. These new Elevons are much bigger than the old ones, so that's why it was overtuned. Should have turned the gains down a bit more. Oh well. So does it work better or worse without the tail? Uh, it's different, that's for sure. I think the ground effect itself, like the negative feedback loop of the ground effect, is stronger without a tail because that tail is just like a wing that's higher up out of the ground effect, so it has less ground effect. So now that we have the entire lifting surface or the entire wing down in the ground effect, it's just stronger. So I guess it kind of depends on what you're trying to achieve. It's definitely not as smooth, like you get a lot more porpoising. Given I never tried to turn the pitch gains down even more, I probably should have done that, but uh, even then it seems to get some negative ground effect feedback porpoising, so pretty interesting stuff. Here's some clips of it driving around with the motors tilted up for par thrust. It goes quite a bit slower like this, but it still flies without contacting the water, which is really cool. I've really grown to love par thrust. It can even go over obstacles like sticks and stuff, but only short ones. <laughs> it still needs very flat surfaces. With the motors in the mid position like this, it just seems like we've broken into a realm of like a whole different type of vehicle. This is a power augmented ram effect vehicle. It's just like a hovercraft except with no skirt and the lifting motor and the propulsion motor is combined into one. It just, it skims at a very low speed. So that's all for this model. I'm gonna be taking a little break from ground effects stuff for a little while to work on other things, but I hope to pick it back up in the fall. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, bye. That's so fun.